Before we sign papers on the sale of our Care Square home, and just before we pass papers to buy Peggy's farm, my phone rang. On the other end of the line was the woman from a television production company who had the crazy idea to put Chip and me on TV. It was two weeks later that the camera crew arrived, a few days after that when the houseboat arrived that Chip surprised me with, and the top guy on the crew told us, if I do my job, you two just landed yourself a reality TV show. It was 2012 by the time an even bigger camera crew came back to film a full pilot episode of Fixer Upper for HGTV, and it wouldn't be until 2013 that the show would get picked up. But we never stopped. We never slowed down. Our family just kept pushing, finding our way through. We didn't know if the TV show would ever really get off the ground, so we just kept working at making the most of our lives, despite a seemingly never-ending spate of financial obstacles. Since the houseboat wasn't a livable option, my parents let us move into their house. They had actually bought a place in Castle Heights, but later decided to move. Though they'd recently put the house on the market, it hadn't yet sold. So they said, hey, we know you're working on the farm. Why don't you just live in our house for a while? We don't have to sell it tomorrow. The timing worked out great, and we were so thankful. It worked out well for the pilot episode too, since we were right in the middle of renovating the farm, and that made some good TV. It showed how we were starting over, starting fresh, turning something that was outdated into the home of our dreams, just like we do for our clients. We loved being outside so much at the farm that the first thing Joe had me build was this big outdoor fireplace. We built the whole thing out of these antique bricks we'd found. She also got started on a garden. The house became really the secondary concern. Every time we'd get some cash together, we'd go out there to do some remodeling. We always ended up doing some other project outside. I guess subconsciously, we decided we'd just take it slow and do what we could when we could, which was definitely a change of pace from our normal routine. We'd drive out into the country and sit at what felt like our vacation home, only this vacation home needed a boatload of work. We would sit beside that fire and Joe would tend to her garden. And then we would go inside and just mess around, trying to figure out what we were gonna do next with whatever money came in. We knew we needed to expand the house some. We were eventually able to figure out how to create a lot of room upstairs in the attic, which was unused space at the time. But before we built anything out, we ripped things apart, hoping to find some old beams and hardwood floors. And when we tore off the drywall, we found shiplap everywhere. So I was instantly like, we're using that as our finished wall. We painted it all white and didn't bother filling in any of the nail holes or anything. The way I saw it, every one of those nail holes was a little piece of history, and they all added character to the home. And just as important, we saved eight grand in drywall costs right there. We were always thrifty, and we loved using old materials, making our own things, doing the work ourselves when we could. It was our job. It was our passion, and this farm was our dream. We couldn't wait until it was time to move in. Back in the late 1800s, when a place like this was originally built, you had to work with what you had. You had to figure stuff out. You certainly couldn't Google it. You didn't have the internet. You didn't even have how-to books. You had to sit there and wrestle with it. You found this old spare part. You did this other thing. You hooked it up to a donkey and you just tried it out. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't, but eventually you'd pop out on the other side and say, I've got this. Call me old fashioned, but I've always liked to solve problems like that. It took us quite a while before we made things happen to the farm and got it to a point that it was move-in ready. Then we stopped and looked back at all we'd done, the good times and the bad, the times when we were literally flush with cash and the times we could barely pay our bills. Did this mean we were finally out of the woods? It sure felt like it. We had managed to keep our heads above water through some really tough times. And even in those tough times, our precious employees had continued to play a huge part in our business. They stuck it out with us. Some of these employees went way back with us, all the way back to the very beginning. Most of the boys who'd helped with my early flips were still around. You probably know a couple of them, Shorty, Jose from the show. Even before that, one of the guys who mowed lawns with me, ironically, was Shorty and Jose's father-in-law. 
His daughter was the very first girl I ever hired to help me run that little corner wash and fold over by Baylor. She's still with us today. We don't own that wash and fold anymore, but she works at our company. So does Joe's friend who worked with her before she decided to close the shop. Looking back, it's just amazing to see how all this ties together. Those people had seen how hard we'd worked and how we always tried to pay them first, no matter what, during all those tough times, without even purposefully trying, just by being who we are and doing what we do, we'd created a Magnolia family. The work we did managed to touch a lot of people's lives, and it's just not possible to put into words the gratitude we feel for each and every person who helped us along the way. A couple of our suppliers bent over backward for us during those lean times too, A few of them gave us extra time to pay for some of the materials we needed in order to keep going. They say it takes a village to raise a child. I'd like to amend that and say it takes a village to run a small business. We're glad we doubled down on the renovation business during that tough period. We focused heavily on the real estate side of the Magnolia Homes business too, both listing and selling homes in and around Waco and helping buyers find that home of their dreams. We especially liked it when we could find our customers a home that wasn't quite move-in ready, but was in their price range. We could offer a renovation service as a way to turn that fixer-upper into a home that they really loved. Not only were jobs like that fun and fulfilling, they really allowed us to put all of our skills to work. They were the jobs that kept us afloat financially. Well, guess what? That evolving business model was just the thing that pushed the concept of a Chip and Joanna TV show over the top. The folks at HGTV love the idea of following home buyers through the process from start to finish, from selection through renovation, with a big reveal at the end when they finally saw the finished product. I find it interesting that the skills we honed flipping houses had prepared us for the grueling time commitments involved with filming client-based renovations for television. They said all this made for great TV. I mean, the timing of it all couldn't have worked out any better. As with the sizzle reel, we couldn't have scripted any of these things if we tried. We didn't know what made great TV. We were just trying to make a living and trying hard to honor the craft we had both fallen in love with over the years. We'd been in business for more than 10 years, and by then I think people in Waco had come to know who we were and what we were all about. So when some of this started hitting, Waco seemed to support us and protect us. We were not stars here. We were just the same Chip and Joe they'd always known and supported for years. I also love the fact that we'd never quit. We fought like cats and dogs to the bitter end, and one thing led to another. Next thing you know, the remodeling business was booming, our flips were flipping, rentals were renting, and banks started loaning again. All that happened right around the time that the TV show got picked up in 2013. Then all of a sudden we had these camera crews around us and all of these assistant directors and sound guys and production assistants and network executives were telling us how unique we were and how they loved our work and how great this TV show was going to be. It was just all surreal, like one of those dreams where you can't tell fact from fiction. Honestly, I needed that boost after going through all those ups and downs. I just felt vindicated. We'd spent all this time doing the best we could every day. And for the people to notice, it was really rewarding. 